in my lesson on hermeneutics, this was way back probably in Matthew 2, I believe, I stress an important thing. And that is synonyms are a thing. That's important because the really bad theology you have out there is when people try to parse words, they argue over different words, and they try to make every synonym mean something really specific, and they separate it from everything else. And they're just different ways of phrasing the same idea. Talked about how um, the worst system, uh, theological system, that really doesn't want to deal with synonyms is called dispensational. In that system, they say the kingdom of heaven is different than the kingdom of God. Doesn't really make any sense. They say that the day of the Lord is one thing, the great and terrible day of the Lord is a different one, the day of God is something else, and the day of our Lord Jesus Christ is something else. It makes no sense. She so said, well, this is kind of crazy. Why would they even do that? Well, their favorite verse is 2 Timothy 2.15. Now what's important is it's not only their favorite single verse, it's only their verse in the King James Version. So when you hear someone say this language, they say, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Whenever you hear someone say that right away in a conversation, you know he's definitely a dispensationalist. Um, because this one translation you only find in the King James Version gives them permission to cut the Bible into tiny little pieces so that each verse looks like it's on like a, the little sheet of paper you get in a fortune cookie. And they just draw out the one or two verses that they like, that are um, inspiring. They apply them to themselves. And anything that they don't like, it talks about hardship, tribulation, and things like that, oh, that refers to someone else. Usually they say it refers to the Jews, when they come to the verses that are just unequivocally says it's going to happen to saints, which is us, well then that's, they're the tribulation saints. They're, they're not us. They don't apply it to themselves. So before we move ahead, we're going to look at this verse in the other translations. Basically in every other single translation. And I encourage you, if you are curious about this, go biblehub.com. You can look it up and it will give you every single translation that's available in English, and it will give you the Greek. So, here we have these other translations. Kind of read over them to yourself. As you read over them, it seems very clear that what Paul is telling Timothy isn't to divide up the word of truth, but he's telling him, Timothy, when you're going to preach the word and you're studying the word, it's very importantly that you diligently correct it rightly and accurately handled. So like, where are they coming up with this? How did King James come up with this uh, translation? The Greek word that Paul used is orthotomeo, which literally means to cut in a straight line. Cut in a straight line, well that maybe kind of leads previously to divide you, cut things up. But why would Paul use this word, cut in a straight line. We'll find out. We'll go to Acts 18. So Acts chapter 18, verse 1. After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. And he found a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had commanded all the Jews to leave Rome. And he went to see them, and because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them and worked. Now here's the kicker. For they were tent makers by trade. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and tried to persuade Jews and Greeks. And when Silas and Timothy, that's the one he wrote to, arrived from Macedonia, Paul was occupied with the word, testifying to the Jews that Christ was Jesus. So Paul loves to use metaphors. Pretty much Everyone in the Bible likes to constantly use metaphors. So, since Timothy was his disciple in the Word, and Paul was a tent maker by trade, and it says this is how he survived because he didn't get paid to preach the gospel, he worked and earned his own living, it's very likely that Timothy was also Paul's apprentice as a tent maker. 
Well, if you're a laborer, or you're a tent maker, and leather's not exactly cheap, it's pretty darn important that when you're doing your work, you always cut in a straight line, that you're precise in everything you do. Most likely, Paul beat this in Timothy's mind thousands and thousands of times. Um, and how much more important is the Word of God than just a piece of leather? So he's telling Timothy he has to be equally careful, equally precise, equally specific, so as not to damage any leather. Well, he better not damage his listeners by not being precise with the Word. That's what he said. Give you another example. If Lewis was here today, he's not. He's about to graduate the police academy. As one cop to another cop, I would say whenever you're reading the word and you're preaching it to people, make sure you always aim straight. He would know what it means. If my dad was saying, I'd probably say, when you're reading the word, make sure you always keep it in the proper focus. He's a photographer. It makes sense. So that's pretty much what Paul's saying. If you have any lingering doubt, we're going to... Uh, Go to another hermeneutic rule, which is always put the verse in its larger context. So we're going to do that. We're going to read all of 2 Timothy chapter 2, but to get more effect, I'm going to wait to the end so we can put this whole argument like out on the table, put out the different definitions, and it's when we finally get to 2 Timothy 2, it'll blow you away that they could possibly get this crazy theology, crazy interpretation from that verse when you see the whole chapter.